Hello guys, today we will work on the Steel MS260 chainsaw. We will see how to replace the carburetor, the fuel filter and the oil filter which is leaking on my old steel. It's also not starting at all, so let's jump to it right away. As you can see, the lower section of my saw is full of oil because it's leaking and the case is also full of oil so I need to fix that and for that I need to remove the clutch from the side of the chainsaw but let's start by disassembling everything and cleaning up a bit of this mess of course before starting to disabling or disassembling anything I need to remove all the oil and all the fuel from, from the tanks of the chainsaw if the only thing that interests you is how to uh, install a new carburetor or fuel line, you can jump straight away at 12 minutes 30. If you want to know how to install the new uh, oil line or how to dismantle the side of the saw, you can jump at 25 minutes or 35 minutes for the installation of the new oil line. I must say I'm not a professional on chainsaws, that was the first time I uh, disassembled a chainsaw so uh, you might see something that I've made not in the right order, I was learning uh, as I was going so don't judge me too hard on that but the job was done pretty well and you will see at the end of the video that my chainsaw is starting like a brand new after the carb replacement. <laughs> and if all you want is uh, how to see the chainsaw running you can you can jump straight away at one hour three minutes uh, where you will see me starting that saw but for now let's just start the disassembling and as you saw straight away the side cover is full of oil and uh, sawdust which is normal since there's oil uh, dripping on the chain when it's spinning uh, reason why the cover is dirty as it is and obviously you need to be careful when you're manipulating the chain since uh, it's dangerous for cut scratch uh, because the teeth are very sharp on this thing now it's time for some air blowing with air compressor so there's no need to see it on regular speed and the annoying sound that you hear is my air compressor spinning 10 times the regular speed I also speed up the disassembling of the main parts because uh, you can see uh, even on fast forward how it's been done so there's no need to lose time in uh, viewing this on regular speed. Removing the main handle is pretty straightforward. There's two screws on the side and two screws under the chainsaws and after that you just need to pull to take it out of the slot and remove it from the frame of the chainsaw. Coming to the side of the chainsaw is one of the part where I was not certain of what I was doing so you might see some awkward stuff but uh, the job has been done. I remove pretty much everything that need to be removed uh, because even if I didn't have to work there in this uh, special place I wanted to completely disassemble the chainsaw because it need a really good cleanup because there was oil pretty much everywhere because of the leak. Those little plastic plugs uh, are hiding the screws that holding the frame together and uh, this one was pretty easy even, even if I'm struggling a bit but the one on the front was a pain of the ass to remove uh, and since it's just plastic you ob obviously don't want to break it uh, and it's holding a little um, aluminium guide for the chain so another reason to be careful when removing this but it was very hard to remove without breaking anything as you can see my air filter need to be cleaned since uh, it's a bit clogged with sawdust and don't worry I will clean up this filter before installing it. I don't need to uh, buy or install a new one, this one will still be good, just need to be uh, cleaned a bit. And this lever that I'm pulling is what's making office of a choke. 
the choke on this thing is not on the carburetor it is on the air filter so it's important uh, to operate the chainsaw with the air filter on because you won't have a choke so if it's cold start you will have trouble starting it without the air filter <coughs> And pretty much the only tool needed to uh, disassemble this old thing is a Tor T27 which uh, usually come with the chainsaw when you buy it. Uh, but if you don't have it, uh, just, I just said that it was a T27 Torque so you can uh, order it or buy it anywhere but usually it's coming with the chainsaws. So you can do the maintenance by yourself without requiring the help of a professional to do it for you. Now I'm removing the two bolts that holding the two parts of the chainsaw together so I'm getting ready to separate it. Uh, but when you will do it, if you want to separate it, you'll see that uh, the neck that holding the carburetor section to the crankcase or to the cylinder head, it's pretty tight so you will have to work with tiny tools to disconnect the carburetor crankcase hose and the loose neck or the neck of the carburetor to the head cylinder because uh, as i said it's very tight and as you can see you don't have a lot of room to play around it but there's no magic in it and there's no special tool required uh, only a lot of patience and also uh, if you want to pry on the cylinder head like i am doing to or to to take the neck out of the cylinder gap you need to be careful not to pry too hard and break a ventilation plate from the cylinder head because those plate or fan are uh, made to dissipate the heat from the cylinder so if you break one or if you, if you break more than one you will have eating problem overeating problem and you might blow up the engine of your chainsaw and as you see, I am struggling a lot to take those parts separate from each other. The reason is because you don't just have the neck of the carburetor to disconnect, but also a little hose uh, from the crankcase to the carburetor. If you do this, you will also have to disconnect the wire that going from the coil to the switch so you have plenty of room to separate them and don't break any wire while pulling on it. Most of the screws were uh, in plastic or in aluminium and it was also full of greasy oil, old oil. So I had no problem at no time uh, unscrewing a bolt because it was seized or rust or anything because there's no rust on this thing it's all plastic and aluminium so you should not have any problem working around this chainsaw by using only the T27 torque that coming with the chainsaw you need to be careful when you disconnect those wires uh, you don't obviously want to break one but if you happen to break one the wires are long enough so you can recrimp a new connector to it and connect it back to the coil without any problem. As you can see, there is oil and dirt pretty much everywhere. Reason why I wanted to uh, disassemble that chainsaw completely and do a good cleanup. So uh, I'll, this way I'll be sure there will be no dust or dirt. Uh, getting into the fan and blocking the, the, the heat sink or anything. Cleaning these parts uh, were, was very easy. Uh, obviously, uh, it was uh, dirty everywhere, so it required a lot of patience. But I managed to clean up uh, everything pretty well using a flat screwdriver to access or to push my rug uh, in the small space. But I end up to have a pretty clean chainsaw at the end. To remove the carburetor, the first thing you need to do is to remove the black handle or the top of the handle because you need to disconnect the throttle so you can pull on the carburetor. If you don't disconnect the throttle from the trigger before pulling on the carburetor, the carburetor won't move at all. And if you manage to move it, you will probably end up with a 
banded throttle arm and you obviously don't want to do that so uh, be careful and when you will open this handle to disconnect the throttle arm there is a lot of little spring holding the trigger and the safety handle and uh, is the reason why I'm putting back the top of the handle as soon as I remove the carburetor because I don't want to mess with those little spring and I don't want to lose any of them e either. When you're disconnecting the fuel line from the carburetor, you need to be gentle uh, if you uh, think of keeping it because it's very fragile, but uh, I suggest to replace it and it's, it's not very expensive. And this way you will be sure that you won't have a leak of fuel when your, your saw will be uh, sitting on a side and uh, you need to replace the fuel filter anyway. So uh, it's the best to replace everything in one shot so you will be sure that everything will work as it's supposed to be. Reaching the fuel filter is pretty tricky. I'm using a pair of long plier. You can use a hook if you have one. Uh, the goal is obviously to reach the oil, uh, the fuel filter and disconnect it from the hose. And I find out it was easier to take it close to the hole or to the cap of the fuel tank when it was sitting upside down. So as you can see, uh, there's a little like spring effect in the fuel hose that keep you from uh, pulling on the fuel filter but it's pretty easy to remove anyway and as soon as the fuel filter is removed you can go back on the top and pull on the fuel line and it will uh, come out straight away as you can see it's just kind of press fit in the hole so you better replace it for a new one since the rubber of the hose is getting a little dry and as I said if you want to avoid a fuel leak you better replace it in a way. I'm also replacing the neck of the carburetor so I'm sure there will be no air leak uh, as well but it is totally unnecessary I think because it's not a part that wearing very often and if you don't see any damage in it you can leave it there and I don't think you will have any problem mine was fine but since I have the new one in the kit I decide to replace it anyway here I am sorry for the bad camera angle I forgot to rise the cameras and my arm is hiding pretty much everything for you to see and I apologize for that but I was just struggling to put the fuel line back in the tank. Reaching at the tip of the fuel line to install the new fuel filter, it's the same process. Uh, I'm using uh, my set of pliers this time. I think it will be pretty hard to use a hook since there is no uh, fuel filter at the end of the line so I feel that your hook will just slide off the line and you won't be able to catch it uh, reason why I think the long pliers are the best for this procedure but maybe there's a tool uh, which work better for this situation but I find my pliers were uh, doing a pretty good job and as you saw the fuel line is still not pressed in his hole because uh, it was easier to reach the fuel line from uh, the cap, the fuel cap, to install the fuel filter before uh, pressing it in the hole. But now it's time to press it in its place, and it's pretty uh, touchy because you can use a tool to push it in, but if you use a tool like a flat screwdriver, you need to be very careful not to uh, pass through and uh, make a hole or a puncture in the fuel line. I am using a flat screwdriver to place it correctly in the hole, but I am very careful. But I will also require the help of a set of pliers because the the backside 
of the two or the O's. Uh, I can't reach it. I can't reach it with the flat screwdriver and uh, by just turning the fuel line in its place, I managed to uh, make the lip go inside of the tank and uh, make the fuel hose sitting at the right position. But again, if you're using a flat screwdriver like I'm doing, you need to be very careful not to puncture the hose. As you can see, the fuel line is now at the right position. Uh, the lip is in everywhere and you can see how the, sh the line is shaped inside the tank. Uh, maybe you will see better with the flashlight. You can see the fuel filter is sitting in the bottom of the tank. And now the best thing to do is to put back the fuel cap in the hole so you will be sure that there will be no dirt or contaminant going in the tank while you are working on your chainsaw. Now it's time to replace the line between the crankcase and the carburetor. Uh, in my case it was coming with a kit so uh, it's best to replace it since I have it but if you have a kit which not including this line you can just inspect it very carefully maybe put some water in it and blow in it uh, and see if there's a crack or a puncture because uh, it's carrying the pressure from the crankcase to the carburetor which activating the fuel pump in the carburetor so obviously you cannot allow any air to go in this house. Uh, so uh, if you have it, it's best to just replace it for a brand new one. Again, here, since I don't have any line, any neck or anything in my way, uh, I do a little cleaning before installing the new parts. This rubber neck is pretty tricky to reinstall back because it is obviously bigger than the old and you need to uh, crush it a bit to put it back, but obviously you don't want to crush it at a point where you will uh, crack the rubber. So you still need to be careful. And as I said earlier, if you made a good inspection and you see that your original part is not broken, there's no puncture or crack in it, there's no point of replacing it. So uh, you will save that trouble. But if you have it in the kit and you are uh, willing to replace it, why not doing it and replacing it with a brand new part? It's your choice. But as always, uh, before replacing or removing any parts, you always need to be sure that the new part is the same. So you won't have to uh, re-disassemble uh, everything to put back the old part because your new part doesn't fit. So before doing any of those replacement parts, you need to be sure that you have the right kit and all the parts fitting uh, where they belong. As you see, I'm getting ready to reinstall the carburetor, but there's a thing before <laughs> installing the carburetor. Don't forget to install the little black uh, line that go from the carburetor to the crankcase because you will have to remove the carburetor to put this line uh, at its place because it's going by the carburetor side to the hole and not the opposite. So you need to put to install this line before the carburetor. It's pretty pretty easy to do. Basically, you just need to put the hose in the hole and pull from the other side. Uh, with a little circle motion so the lip of the hose or the lip of the line get uh, sitting pretty even around the plastic casing. Uh, again here I'm using my set of pliers to spin the old to spin the line in the hole uh, to make sure it's perfectly sitting. 
as you can see here i am installing a brand new carburetor and at the end of the video you will see uh that this is the old carburetor uh installed on my chainsaw i will explain it later in the video but basically what happened is that the new carburetor uh that come with the kit was not working but i will explain it later in the video to reinstall the carburetor you need you need to move your way back from what you did when you remove it uh, which is removing the top of the handle because if you let it there obviously you won't be able to hook up the the arm of the throttle but also because the carburetor doesn't fit in the hole if the handle is there so you need to remove it so you can align the carburetor in the stud when you're pushing the carburetor at this place you need to be careful not to pinch the wires that going uh, at the coil but also the fuel line that is pretty uh, tight between the plastic housing and the carburetor uh, you want to be sure that the fuel line is not pinched so you don't have a blockage and the fuel uh, going freely to the carburetor you also need to insert the bottom uh, inlet of the carburetor to the crankcase hose and it's all done simultaneously as you go reason why you need to push slowly uh, not too firm so you don't uh, break something behind the carburetor because you didn't see it You need to be sure that you install the two gasket before the carburetor, which are the, st the, the steel gasket and the paper gasket before pushing on the carburetor because you don't want to have to take it out because you have some missing piece laying down on the counter. After the carburetor is at this place, before going any further, you need to put back the cover of the handle at this place so you'll be sure you don't lose any spring or anything that come from the trigger those are pretty small parts and you don't want to lose anything and after that you will can you can move over with the carburetor but you need to cover your handle before you lose something and of course before moving forward you need to make sure that the safety and the trigger are moving freely and perfectly uh, because you don't want to uh, disassemble your carburetor or the handle because of a missed uh, arm or a spring or something and now that everything is safe you can move forward with the installation of your carburetor this is pretty straightforward you just need to screw the, the, the nuts on the stud as you can see when I'm reassembling everything, I am not using any chart for the torque and I'm not using any torque wrench either. I'm just going as I feel and I know it will be fine. But if you feel more safe using the a torque, you can order the shop manual or look for the torque spec online and use a torque wrench. But in my case, I didn't feel the need of using one. So if you decide to, like me, not using a torque wrench, uh, you need to use a good judgment because all those screws and those bolts are screwed in plastic and aluminum. So it's very fragile and you don't want to end up buying new parts of your chainsaw because you screw up with the, the, the tread in the hole. So be careful when you're screwing in aluminum and in plastic because most of those screws uh, are harder than the plastic and the aluminium so the screw will be fine and you will ruin your parts now that i'm done with the carburetor part it's now time to take care of the oil leak but before that i need to clean this up because it's pretty dirty and obviously again i will use the compressed air to blow out all this mess and since i don't want that dirt to go inside my crankcase I need to block all the holes so nothing goes inside so uh, to block the the little hole of the crankcase 
I just put back the old small uh, line that come from the carburetor so this way I'm sure nothing will go in and for the carburetor inlet I just put a rug like uh, you just saw uh, and on the top I let the spark plug in so obviously nothing will go on this hole so to reach the oil line I need to remove the brake and the clutch so now I am removing the cover the outside have been cleaned up but inside it's will still need to be cleaned but by cleaning all the parts and the screws as i go it gives less cleaning in one shot and it feel more like working on the thing than just cleaning and cleaning forever and since my air compressor is pretty loud it's also give a break to my ears and my neighbors Again, there was the first time I was working on the side of a chainsaw. It was the first time I was removing a clutch and replacing a oil line. So if you see me doing things in the wrong order, uh, please don't be too hard on your judgment. But the job uh, was still uh, done. The result was the same. I fixed the oil leak and everything worked perfectly. And when you remove a clutch from the chainsaw, you need to be careful and notice what part uh, was where and make sure in what position there was so you don't end up with the sprocket installing upside down and having trouble uh, installing your, your chain later. So if you're not sure what I'm doing, sometime is taking picture of my parts before I remove them so uh, I can have a look to the picture when I assemble my things and make sure they are in the right position and in the right order. And when you want to remove a clutch, you better remove the brake before. Uh, in my case, uh, I decide to remove it after, but uh, my mistake was I forget to uh, re release the brake. So my clutch was stuck with the brake and it took me a little while before noticing it. And as you can see now, I'm releasing the brake, so now the clutch is free. So if you want to avoid that kind of mistake, you better remove the brake before uh, starting to disassembling the clutch. When you're doing this or any job that for that matter, uh, it's always the best time to inspect your parts and see if there is anywhere like if the bearing need to be replaced or the clutch itself need to be replaced. But in my case, in my case, everything was fine. So I just move on with the disassembling of the clutch. The thing you need to know when you remove the clutch uh, of a chainsaw is that uh, it's screwed on the tip of the crankshaft, obviously, but uh, it's not counterclockwise like the rest of the bolt that you use to unscrew. Uh, to unscrew the clutch, you need to spin it clockwise, which is pretty awkward when you don't know it. So uh, if you go counterclockwise like anything else, you will end up tightening the clutch and uh, it will never remove like that. So you need to go clockwise. What I'm doing at the moment, uh, since I need something to block the crankshaft for, from spinning while I'm unscrewing the clutch, is I'm putting some nylon cable in on the piston. So when I will uh, spin the crank, it will sit on the, uh, on the cable and block the piston from, from moving. So it will be easy to unscrew the clutch. Some people will be uh, trying to put a screwdriver in the blade of the fan to block the crankshaft from spinning. And it's a very bad idea because if you break those blades, uh, the fan will be unbalanced when uh, the engine will run. But also uh, you will suffer of a lack of air displacement in your heatsink and you will end up again <coughs> by overheating your engine. As you can see, I'm uh, forcing clockwise to unscrew the clutch and there we go, it's just release. It's pretty awkward, but don't worry, you won't break anything. It's made like that so, so it doesn't unscrew by itself when the engine is running.
Now that my clutch is removed, again, it's the best time to inspect it. Uh, in my case, it is fine. But uh, if you need to replace it, it is the best time since your chainsaw, it's all open on the counter. Now that it's removed, it's time to remove the brake. Obviously, you can remove the brake before removing the clutch. It's up to you. I don't know which way it is easier. But in my case, it was pretty easy to remove the brake while the clutch was not there. And the reason I need to remove all these is because the oil pump is on the shaft, on the crankshaft behind the clutch. And to uh, replace the, f the oil line, I need to remove the oil pump. And now that my clutch is unscrewed, I'm putting back the spark plug so nothing will get into the engine. It's just a precaution. It takes 10 seconds and it may save you a lot of trouble if something bad get in that cylinder. Again here, I'm sorry for the bad camera angle. I forgot to raise the camera before starting to disassemble the oil pump. But now you can see how it made. Uh, it's just two screw uh, bolted on the side of the engine. So you remove those screw and the oil pump will just slide off the crankshaft. And this will give me access to the oil line, which is installed pretty much the same way as the fuel line. It's just pressed into the crankcase with the oil filter at the end of the line at the exception on this case that the oil filter is small enough to go in the hole so you don't have to pull it by the the oil cap like i did with the fuel filter As you can see, the oil pump is just sitting on the oil line and uh, the oil line was dry and cracked. The reason why the oil was leaking between the oil line and the oil pump. And it was the reason why I needed to, to replace the oil line. Uh, I find that it's pretty awkward setting if it was a line fit in like a fuel line on a carburetor as example uh, there will there won't be no oil leak like in my case and i feel like it's a weird design that could be improved by simply connecting the hose directly to the oil pump instead of sitting on the line maybe there's a purpose that i'm not understanding at this time or at this point but i find the design a bit awkward and to remove the oil line you just need to pull on it and it will come along with the oil filter at the end uh, it's pretty hard to remove because it's pre not press fit but it's very tight and uh, i am careful because i don't want to break the, the the rubber around it and push the line into the oil tank the rubber was so old that every time i was pulling on it there was a piece of rubber uh ripping off the line and stick uh, staying in my uh, pliers so uh, i decided to use an, a bigger set of pliers before i run out of rubber and I have a lot of trouble removing the, the existing line. But as you just saw, it's a simple line, a 90 degree line with the oil filter at the end. So this is the new line with the new oil filter. It's brand new, it's very, very easy to install. Just putting the filter at the end of the line 
and reinstalling the line at the uh, in the hole and there only one position that the line can go in the hole so if you're scared to misplace the o's uh, take a picture before removing the old one so you will know uh, how it goes but it's very not confusing since uh, you have a little dent in the crankcase, not, not in the crankcase, but on the side of the hole and the little lip on the, of the line will sit in it. So it's pretty easy to reinstall. Again, it's just a press fit. So you push with your thumb or your finger until the O sit at the right position. And as you can see, there's a little lip at the bottom side so you cannot uh, misplace the hose really and when you installing it obviously you need to apply a, a good amount of pressure to make sure the lip is sitting all around the hose because in this situation uh, it's pretty hard to push with a tool and you don't you really don't want to put a flat screwdriver <coughs> in there and damaging the seat of the oil pump and and the ending up with a leak uh, which is the reason why I have replaced that hose or that line in the first place. And after the line is at its place, uh, you just uh, put back the oil pump uh, at its position, apply a little pressure uh, around the, the oil line to make sure the pump is at the right position and you put back the two bolts uh obviously again it's plastic and aluminium so you don't put it too tight if you're not sure use the torque spec uh, but it's sitting pretty tight on the crankcase so there's no big chance of a mistake here unless you very over tight it but uh if you don't know how to tie the bolt at this point you better not start this job at all As you can see, the two bolts are in their hole. Just matter to tighten them at the right torque, which uh, I go uh, by feeling, and I know it will be fine. Again, using the tool that came with the saw uh, when I bought it. And after you're done with the oil pump, it's time to reinstall the clutch and the brake. Since I removed the brake, in last i decide to go backward and uh, install the brake in first it's pretty pretty easy to install but you need to be careful because the spring has a good amount of tension on it so you need to do that the right way because you can hurt your finger if you do that the wrong way and since there there's no spring uh, hooked up to the handle of the brake uh, you need to place the handle at the closest position so uh, your spring will have less tension and it will be easier obviously to install back at the right place because if it's at the uh, longer position you will have to extend the spring like crazy and it's basically impossible to install it back if it's that long if you don't have the special tool to install spring, I find that the best way to do it is just by using a flat screwdriver and slide the spring in his pin. Some people will make a notch in their screwdriver so it's sitting more safely on the pin when they're prying the spring. It's up to you. You can do that just with a grinder or a file. Uh, but I find that pretty easy to do uh, with a regular flat screwdriver and I haven't had any trouble to do that so far. After that you reinstall the clutch and make sure that all the parts are on the right side or the right way. And before installing the clutch itself you need to release the brake because Obviously, the circle will be too small and the clutch won't fit in a hole. So uh, before doing it, make sure your brake is released. And again, when you screwing the clutch back on the crankshaft, 
you have to do it counterclockwise even if it feel awkward it is the way it's done and you won't have any problem it will if you didn't damage the thread it will screw pretty easy at this position and when you are ready to tie it up again if you want to use my way uh, I remove the spark plug and I will put back the cable in the cylinder it's soft there's no metal in it so there is no way I will scratch the cylinder or the piston or the head for that matter and uh, there's no very chance of damaging anything when using this metal so uh, I think it's, very, it's really the best way to do it And the good thing about uh, screwing a thing counterclockwise is because of the engine spinning, there's no uh, chance of unscrewing it by itself because when the engine will spin, it will tight your clutch. So uh, you don't have to, to tight it like crazy because no way that will come out of there by itself after you install it and after you're done again you remove the cable and you put your spark plug back i have a brand new spark plug going with coming with the kit but uh, as soon as I'm working, uh, as long as I'm working on the chinsa, I rather stick with the old spark plug. So if something happen, uh, I drop the chinsa or I drop a tool and it break the spark plug, at least I will break the old one and not my brand new spark plug. As I said earlier, when you reinstalling the clutch, you need to make sure that the brake is released so you have enough room around to put back the clutch in its hole, which is exactly what I've forgot in this situation. Fortunately for me, I will uh, found out pretty fast so I don't struggle too long, but <laughs> I did exactly what I advised not to do. I forgot to release the brake. But you see now that I released it, the clutch is getting in pretty easily. And again, you need to make sure that all the parts you removed are aligned, not aligned, but in the same position, not upside down. And finally, the last clip that holding all together. Those clips are usually pretty, pretty easy, easily to install uh, with a flat, regular flat screwdriver. So there is no need of buying a, a special tool for that. Removing them and installing them up and back are pretty easily. The only thing you need to be careful of is to put your hand over it so if it happened to fly in the air you will catch it and you won't lose it somewhere behind the toolbox or on the floor and what i'm doing now is just spinning the clip with a flat screwdriver to make sure it's perfectly sitting in its place all around the crankshaft <coughs> Now it's time to put back the cover of the brake. Again, it's just plastic. 
it's two screws so you make sure you you need to be careful not to put it too tight Now that all the parts and the carburetor kit have been replaced for a new one, it's time to reassemble the chainsaw. So it, it is simple, you go backward from what you did when you disassemble it. Now that you reassembling, it is very important not to forget the rug in the hole of the carburetor because you will have a big surprise the first time you will crank this. While you're there, you can inspect the hole and make sure there's no dirt in it. I just blew in it, but uh, before blowing in this hole, make sure to drop the piston so there's no gap in the cylinders. So if it, so if it happened. Uh, to blow a contaminant in the soil, at least it will stay there and you will see it and be able to remove it and it will not fail or go inside under the piston in the crankcase. I believe it is the hardest part of the whole job is to put it back together simply because you have no room at all to to play uh, uh, between those parts to to make sure the neck of the carburetor is perfectly sitting all around from this side from the right side you can see uh i can use the word pretty easily but on the other side the side of the coil or the clutch you can see nothing at all so you have to work only from the right side and you need to make sure that uh, there's no gap at all because if there's even a tiny bit of air going, going in that neck, uh, the chainsaw will not work at all or will work pretty badly. So uh, you need to be careful, take your time, make sure it's perfectly sitting and do it only once, but once good. You don't want to go back and play with this thing again because you did it wrong the first time you also need to make sure that you don't forget to connect the 
crankcase hose that going from the, can the crankcase to the carburetor. And when this neck is finally tight, you can now install the two bolt that holding the lower section of the frame or the two part of the chainsaw together. You have a total of three bolts that holding the two part together, one on the coil side and one on the clutch, uh, two, sorry, two on the clutch side. So it's three bolt, but they're very important. And this is the next step. But before going any further, I will try to show you what it looked like between those two parts and see uh, how my neck is placed. As you might see, it's perfectly sitting. It's very tight to go and play there, but uh, you need to make sure you do it once uh, very good so you don't have to play with this again. So I've decided to start by the bolt on the coil side, but uh, there's no uh, order on that. It's just matter of uh, preference. Uh, you can start by the two bolt on the other side. It's your choice at this point. But I felt it will hold the neck of the carburetor uh, stronger if I start by screwing the higher bolt on the top i decided to fast forward this part because it's pretty straightforward since uh, it's the way you removed everything uh, and here again before closing anything make sure you don't forget to connect a wire to the coil because your saw will just not work at all <coughs> while i'm on this side i will reinstall the crank uh, straight away it's pretty straightforward as well usually the teeth uh, get aligned automatically but you can test it before uh, screwing it like i just did and it was engaging on the crankshaft pretty uh, well so uh, it's now time to screw it and again uh, it's straightforward, three bolt uh, tight as you feel. Or using the spec with the torque, it's up to you at this point. Those two plastic plugs were funny to remove, but trust me, the one in the front is pretty hard to put back. There is a big tension in, in those four tab. Uh, I did cut the video because it took me about 10 minutes to manage to put that plug back in. Maybe it because I never removed it, so uh, the tab were strong. I don't know, but it was pretty hard to put back. Once again, this screw is screwing only in plastic, so you need to be very careful not to put it too tight because it will ob obviously rip all the thread off the plastic hole. At this point, I decide to pour some oil and some fuel in the tanks to see if there are any leaks before going any further. And I was happy to see that there was no problem at all. I have no leak in the oil section and I have no fuel, uh, no leak in the fuel section apart from my cap that I need to replace.
so I have a small leak from my fuel cap but the O's or all the lines are correctly insert everywhere I have no leak nowhere now I am finalizing the installation on the chain side or the clutch side call it as you want As you can see, as soon as I put some fuel in the saw, uh, there's a leak in the fuel cap. So uh, my fuel cap is in the mail. I should receive it shortly. But for testing the saw, I just put some fuel in it uh, lower enough so it doesn't reach the fuel cap. The installation of the main handle, it's pretty easy. Uh, you have the two bolts uh, or the two screws under the saw and the two screws on the side. You just need to align everything together and screw it. It's pretty easy to do. To install back the top cap, it's pretty easy. It's only one screw on the top of the heads, the cylinder head. And to clean my hair filter, I previously blow it uh, carefully with the compressed air. After that, I'm using a toothbrush and rubbing the greasy uh, dirt in the old gasoline of the chainsaw. So if by any chance there was any uh, cleaning product left in the filter, it will at least be gasoline so it will not be armed to the engine at all. But there's nothing left, I assure you, because I blew it carefully with the compressed air and I wait about two hours before reinstalling it on the chainsaw. As you just saw a couple seconds ago, I just pour some fuel in the carburetor for the initial start since there is no fuel at all in the carburetor and even if I put the choke if there is no fuel in the fuel pump there's big chance that I will crank for a longer period before before the fuel reach the carburetor and start the engine so this way the engine will start straight away and the vacuum created by the crankcase will pull the fuel in the carburetor way faster uh, using this method we're pretty much finished. The only thing left is to reinstall the chain and the side cover before uh, the start up and the test. It's now time to explain to you why I decided to uh, remove the brand new carburetor and install the old one or the original one. So with the new carb it was starting only when I was pouring gas into the spark plug hole or into the carburetor it was as soon as I was uh, installing the air filter starting to, to start it with the choke on or uh, the regular start procedure. It was not starting at all and when I was pouring gas into the carburetor as soon as the gas was burned 
it was stalling and the only way I could uh, keep it running uh, since the choke is in the air filter and not on the carb I was blocking the hole with my thumb or with my finger and it was acting like a choke and it was the only way I could make the engine running so what I did uh, I just took the carburetor kit from the new one which was new obviously the gasket and the pump but I kept my old needle because I'm sure it fit on my whole carburetor I just cleaned it very uh, carefully and with the new kit the chainsaw run without any problem uh, the adjustment is on the side of the casing it's a uh, three order of uh, turn for the eye needle or for the eye adjustment and one quarter of a turn for the low and uh, I will show you right now it start like a charm it run idle like a charm I, obviously it was my whole carburetor so I didn't change the setting of the idle I just make sure the needle for the uh, eye and the low were still at the good position which they were uh, so I will start it right now and you will see it's working uh, like a brand new so uh, I will put the choke <laughs> So if you so if you're thinking of buying a kit, I suggest you buy only a kit and not a new carburetor. The reason why I bought a new carburetor, a, a complete kit, is because it was coming with the oil, uh, oil and the oil filter, and uh, mine was leaking. I show you earlier my case was full of uh, oil. So it's the reason why I bought the complete kit because it's, it was coming with the spark plug and, and the oil kit. But uh, I, I strongly suggest you bought only the gasket and maybe the, the needle if you want a complete new kit. But this piece of junk made in China gave me a lot of trouble. I had I tried three times to remove it, change things. Uh, I thought it was. The, the fuel filter with the new fuel filter was blocked so I put back the old fuel filter and it was not working uh, anyway uh, I thought it was the hose between the carburetor and the crankcase which had a little hole in it or a crack or something so I removed the handle from the the, the main or the crankcase uh, to look at this little piece and everything was good so the only option left was the new carburetor so uh, don't bother buying that crap guys keep your steel or if you want a complete new carburetor I suggest you, you buy a steel so you know it will work it's made for the chainsaw but this thing made in China it's good for the garbage it's just a piece of junk so don't bother buying this as you saw my chainsaw it's worked like a charm with the whole carburetor just with a new kit in it i should have bought that in the first place this is it for now guys please like the video and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the little bell so you will be notified as soon as i will release a new video so on this i wish everybody a good day and see you later goodbye